Hello, this is Andy. Today I'm going to be talking about the use of OpenCV for artistic purposes. So OpenCV and computer vision techniques are generally used industrially in terms of robotics for determining where you are or factories for determining if a part was placed correctly. However, there are some effects and functions in OpenCV that I think could be rendered in real time that change how the world looks a little bit, just in a way enough to make you look at it again. So today I'm going to be panning through the various filters that I've found just by experimenting with various functions in OpenCV. So I'll show you how I did them, how they work, so hopefully that you can go forth and make some of your own. So this filter is called invert. If you look at the structure of a picture in OpenCV, every single pixel is represented as three channels of R, G, and B, where each channel, like each color has an intensity value from 0 to 255 because it's given 8 bits. So what invert does is takes 255 and subtracts each of those values, basically inverting every single color in the image to create this weird effect. This one is called a subtract. It's pretty simple. All it does is take the current frame and subtract the previous frame. As I move, the edges of my face change color in interesting ways, and if you move really quickly, it causes these weird image effects in the background. It's really simple motion detection, but I think it looks pretty interesting. This one is just grayscale. You just average every single color channel that I was talking about into a single channel, and it displays as a black and white intensity. So this is called canny edge detection. It's the classic edge detector. What it does is it takes a kernel, a uh, 3x3 three three kernel, with negative values on one side, positive values on the other, and moves it over the entire image. So in this way, uh, if across the three pixels that you've chosen, there is a difference in the color from the right side to the left side, the total sum after you multiply it against the original image is going to be a large number. So in the final image, it's going to show up as a bright spot instead of a dark spot. It grabs the edges where colors and intensities change in the original image, but it's not very interesting on its own right. This filter is called Color Edges, and it uses the edges from Canny Edge Detection, but it puts a little extra on it. So we multiply the edges that we get, the white spots, versus the original image, and we get this one, this composite. So you can see the details of the lines, and it adds an interesting effect to looking at things. This effect is called Erosion, and it's kind of interesting because you can't tell exactly what has changed, but you know everything looks different. So what this effect does is moves the 3x3 kernel over the whole image, and takes the minimum value within those nine values neighboring the original pixel. So what this does in effect is make all the black spots bigger since if you're right beside a black spot you also become black and make all the light spots smaller. And its counterpart is called dilate and it adds like the opposite effect. Basically it makes all white spots bigger by taking the max of the nine instead of the min. Right, switching between the two quickly, you can see that they're pretty drastically different, but they both add like an interesting effect to the world that we don't normally see with our eyes. This filter is called Derivative. While normal edge detection just finds where the edges are, Derivative finds the edges, but also finds how intense the edge is, or how fast the colors change from one side to the next, for each color channel separately. This adds a slightly demonic effect to everything, which is not really what I was going for, but is an interesting effect. This one is called adaptive thresholding. So it's sort of similar to edge detection from earlier, whereas during edge detection you had to specify how large of a color change would be counted as an edge. In this one, it just finds it itself based on the region, like the neighborhood of the pixels of the original image. So you see the thresholds from everywhere have been added uh, and there's a lot of noise, but I think it looks interesting, sort of like how when newspapers do headshots of people, it just reminds me of that. That we did earlier, subtract. In this case, it's actually using a background subtraction algorithm. So I feed it a history of about three frames, and it, it determines what it considers this background. So you can see I've added a bit of a lag effect to this filter to let you see the filter effect better. It averages the previous frame with the current frame, so they give it get a bit of a history. We can look at it without, and it looks a little harsher, and there's a lot more noise. So I think it looks better with the ghostly effect added. This effect is called channel swap. So in the image, it's represented as R, G, and B channels, and all I've done here is switch the red and the blue one, so everyone looks slightly blue because most people are slightly red in real life. This makes everyone look sort of like a smurf or like avatar. It's sort of interesting. This filter is called resize. What I do is take the original frame, shrink it down to 1% of its original size, and then bring it all the way back up. So the computer has lost information when it shrinks everything down. It has to figure out some new way to make pixels between pixels when you resize it larger. This is done through something called interpolation. Basically, it takes the two 
pixels and averages them to create a third pixel in between them where the third pixel didn't exist previously. So this effect is interesting because it makes everything look pixelated, sort of like one of those old 8-bit video games. Last but not least, we have k-means clustering. So normally k-means clustering is a way of reducing the dimensionality of an image. So you, you know most images have a ton of colors in them. I just explained the whole channel thing where each channel has 255 possible options for the intensity. Well k-means clustering takes that and reduces it down to some smaller, much smaller number of colors. So you see in this frame, I've reduced it down to four colors. And even then you can still see all the detail in the image. What this does is spawn some initial seed pixels that are the four colors and then expands them out until they hit a difference from the original pixel that is too great to be overcome. Uh, and then they switch colors. So originally this filter I couldn't even run in real time because there's so many pixels to iterate through and so many colors to assign them. By shrinking the image 10 times before processing it and then showing it, I was able to make this run in real time and create this wacky effect. Since most of my filters are based on convolutions of kernels, I thought I'd take a moment to explain that. So ignore the words here because they're talking mainly about machine learning, uh, but the idea is the same. So say you have an input image and you want an output image. So what you do is you take a kernel, which is a series of weights like this one, usually uh, an odd quantity by an odd quantity just to make math easier for the computer. But on the input image, it takes these nine pixels that are there, multiplies them by the weights, adds it all up, and that creates this output pixel. Uh, and if that goes over, you know, if that's too big, they just cap it at 255. It's too, if it's too low, they cap it at zero. Um, what this does is it generates a, a new pixel, depending on the neighbors of the original pixel in the original image, determine what this output pixel is going to be. So most of the effects achieved in this video are convolutions of specialized kernels. So now when I say convolve a 3x3 three three kernel over my image to transform it, you know what I'm talking about. So I also made a few more filters that I thought were interesting, but were either too noisy to show or not interesting enough to show. So uh, I'm not going to bother to explain them, but most of the effects that I've achieved in this video use pretty simple like arithmetic operations or geometric transformations. And I think if you chained various OpenCV functions together in an interesting way, you could very easily make some interesting looking filters. Most of what I've done is one or two OpenCV functions, maybe an arithmetic transform, maybe I, I keep the previous frame and do something with it involving the, the next frame. Uh, but they're very simple operations in general, and they're really just a baseline for you to work with, because I haven't seen a video on OpenCV for art yet. So most of the filters I've touched on in this video just work on one frame at a time. However, that you can make video filters that work on multiple frames at a time, relying on the history to tell you something about the future. For instance, I'm looking into optical flow or using machine learning to mess with the images. And those could be interesting things to check out. My end goal for this project is to make a headset with a camera on it that processes the frames before you're able to see them, uh, effectively giving you a new pair of eyes that see everything in a slightly different way. So I'm accomplishing this through a Jetson Nano and a PlayStation VR headset. This is why the real-time aspect of these video filters is so important, because if it can't run on my laptop, then there's no way it's going to run on a Jetson, which is a tiny little desktop computer. If you're inspired by this video or thought of some new video filters that you think could be cool, let me know how to do it in the comments below, and I'll try it out. Thanks for watching.